gentlelady's time has expired. I now recognize the gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. Bishop. Ambassador Sales, I want to revisit, uh, since Representative Titus sort of ridiculed or trivialized what you said about the terrorism risk of an uncontrolled southern border. Um, uh, it's my time, ma'am. Um, I just was sitting here tallying, and, and I, I, I used a figure of 600,000 gotaways. That was, boy, that's an old figure. I asked staff to give me a figure. 1.3 million gotaways over the course of the Biden administration. And what B Border Patrol tells me is you usually got to add in another 10% or so for gotaways that they don't even know about. They, they have some reason to believe it's about another 10% or so. But let's say 1.3 million. If 1% of that number were folks intending to do harm in the nature of terrorists, something like that, that'd be 13,000. That's 650 9-11 teams. Uh, do you have anything to add or do you want to tell you that you weren't allowed to say during the time you were being uh, sort of uh, talked over about the risk that is entailed there? Because it seems to me just as a matter of common sense that it's quite grave. Well, thank you for the question, Congressman. I, I agree with you that the risk is grave and it's not simply a matter of numbers. Um, it's a matter of specific and concrete terrorist plots that have sought to exploit our southern border. Um, as I mentioned in my written statement, um, in 2011, uh, the, Tehran, the uh, Iranian regime in Tehran uh, attempted to plot with a Mexican drug cartel uh, to carry out an assassination of the Saudi ambassador to the United States right here in Washington. They were gonna bomb Cafe Milano in Georgetown. That's not simply a matter of statistics. That's an actual plot um, that terrorists attempted to carry out by exploiting weaknesses on our southern border. And more recently, um, in uh, 2021, uh, the, the mullahs in Tehran were back at it again, uh, attempting to work with um, an individual in Mexico who had ties to drug cartels in that country to assassinate former National Security Advisor John Bolton here in the United States. Um, we know that the Iranian regime is aware of vulnerabilities in our southern border. They have attempted to exploit those vulnerabilities to carry out terrorist attacks here in the United States. I think we have to assume that other terrorist groups, including terrorists in Afghanistan, likewise are aware of the vulnerabilities in our border. It, it is amazing to me, I, if you think back to that language, and it's been referred to here today, referred to here today that was in the 9-11 Commission report that the system was blinking red. That is to say that the risks were palpable. It was obvious to anyone who would analyze with common sense the risks of being hit and where the risk might come from. And they were ignored and trivialized by folks who, who uh, decided that they were, could never happen, hadn't happened that way before. But it's obvious that it could, and I thank you for, for giving voice to it. Uh, let me switch to something else. Colonel Douglas, you, uh, I think the phrase came from you. You mentioned the phrase, the buck stops here. And as you uh, look over, I was reviewing again uh, the, the memo released by the White House on April 6 about uh, sort of assessing Afghanistan debacle and what a, dis what a, what a disgrace it is. Uh, but that, of course, came from whom? Who's the, who said that? Remember? Yes, sir. That came from the president. The President of the United States, do you remember which president? That was President Biden. Uh, actually, the first, first person who popularized that phrase and put it on his desk was Harry Truman. Oh. The buck stops here. You know, I was looking on the internet just quickly, just thinking about that phrase, and uh, it turns out President Biden said that about Afghanistan. That may have been true. He said, the buck stops with me. And yet, all the weakness that is betrayed or that is per, per, portrayed in the way the Afghanistan withdrawal was handled, doesn't it seem true that to pass the buck, that to have person after person, including the, the White House, stand up and say, well, the reason I, we could, we, this was disaster happened is because uh, Donald Trump was president before me and made some decisions, and I, I just couldn't figure out a way to get around those decisions of Donald Trump. Doesn't that actually exacerbate the weakness? Sir, the, uh, the, the initial statement that the buck stops with me taking accountability for the evacuation and, and the subsequent statement saying it was the previous administration uh, is counterintuitive to his initial statement. They're utterly contradictory of one another, which, which actually is a separate element of it that projects weakness even more. You can't even get a single line of thought going that you can stand behind. Um, it is really a great tragedy, and it proposes grave danger to the United States. My time's about expired. I yield.